so much of rest and peace that we find in this place. And I would like to pray. The presence of the Lord is in this place. And we would like to pray for the people. We would like to pray for those viewers who are going to view even later. I would like to pray some promises over their lives concerning their body because the physical conditions of people today are, are really hanging in the balance. Some of them are almost giving up on healing. Some of them have almost thought that God has punished them for the past. And some of them are living with all kinds of uh, fears in their lives. But I would like to pray from the book of Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah 50, chapter 53, and we are going to release the power of God and the anointing through the word of God. It says in verse number four, surely he had borne our griefs. Surely he has borne, Jesus has borne our griefs. And that word griefs there also can be also understood as uh, sicknesses and diseases. The word grief there can be understood as sicknesses and diseases. So he has borne. If he has borne, then you don't have to bear them. You don't have to have them in your body. You can say right now by the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray in Jesus' name that you are healed because Jesus, surely he has borne our sicknesses and our diseases. You can believe God for your healing right now. Wherever you are, in whatever state of condition you are in right now, you can say, I thank you, Lord. Your word said it, and I'm going to agree with your word. I'm not going to agree with what I feel. I'm not going to agree with what people have been telling me. I'm not agreeing with all, all the reports that I have received, but I'm going to agree with the report of God's word. Surely Jesus has borne our griefs. Surely Jesus has borne our sicknesses and diseases. Surely Jesus has borne our sicknesses and diseases. In the name of Jesus, we release anointing and we destroy every yoke of bondage over the lives of people that have been troubling them for years. Sickness has been all around them and disease, the fear of disease. I pray and I bind the foul spirit and I command those spirits that have been tormenting and troubling them to go out of their lives in Jesus' name. And also surely he has borne our griefs and surely he has carried our sorrows. And that word sorrows also could be understood that Jesus has carried our pain our pains and right now we take authority over any kind of a pain in the bodies of your dear people of oh father those who are present here and those who are viewing and those who will view later and right now we release anointing and we take authority over the spirits that have been causing pain and, and in the name of Jesus we bind that foul spirit that have caused this pain Pains in their bodies, in their joints, in their marrows, in, in, in whatever part of their body, their internal organs, and they don't know where the pain is coming from. But Lord, you are healing those pains right now, and you're releasing the power of God and healing them completely and taking away all their pain, O oh God. Because your word says so. Your word says so. We believe your word. We believe your word. We don't believe what we feel. We don't believe what others say about us. And we believe, we don't believe what everybody talks about. Bound, but we want to believe your word. Your word says that surely he had borne and surely he has carried. That's past tense, the Lord, what you have done for us. We are so thankful to you, Lord. We are so thankful to you, Lord. And, we are, and you just need to take, take, take these words and take this prayer into your heart and say, yes, I believe. I just thank God that I'm healed now. I thank God that I'm healed. My wound, the wounds of Jesus has healed my wounds. And, the, and, and I believe the pain has been taken away because Jesus has healed me. That's how you receive your healing, by standing on this word. And how many reports do we believe? When we receive a report, we always believe that report and say, oh yes, this report says so. But this is the report of the word of God. This is a report that has come out of the mouth of God and we believe this report. And we say, yes, Lord, you have borne and you have, you have carried our pain and our sicknesses and our diseases. So fear not, fear not, 
Fear not, have faith in the word of God. Have faith in the word of God. Have faith in the promises of God. Have faith in what Jesus has done for you. Have faith in the message of the cross. Have faith in the covenant that he made with you. Have faith in God. Have faith in the power of God. Fear not. So I'm just releasing um, these words into your heart so that you can take these words and say, yes, that's for me. I believe that's for me. I don't have to stay in this condition. I don't have to stay in pain. I don't have to stay with diseases. I don't have to stay with fear of disease. Sometimes we fear a lot of things that might happen to us. But God wants you to be free from all that. What's going to happen to you? What's exactly going to happen to you is you're going to walk in divine health. That's the power of God. And that's what the Lord is telling you. So take those words into your life. Let me take you to another scripture also from the book of um, uh, Exodus. The book of Exodus chapter number 23. We're going to take these words just as we re- believe a report. See, the only difference is we, we, we put our faith in the bad reports. We put our faith in a, in a bad report much more than putting our faith in a good report because we are so used to the negative kind and we, the negative is more, more important to us than the positive word of God because we have found this. We live in a, in, in a world of negativity. Everything is negative. Everything can happen. I mean, we always say anything can happen. Well, why don't we believe anything good can happen in our lives? These are eternal words that are spoken forever and forever and forever. These words will not be taken back. God doesn't draw back his words. He says, the words that I have spoken, they shall fulfill the cause for which it is sent for. God says, the words that have gone forth out of my mouth, it shall fulfill the purpose for which it is sent for. So you receive healing by taking a promise into your life and saying, yes, Lord, your word said it, and I'm going to believe your word. I'm not going to believe what my feelings. See, your feelings can always be up today and down the next day. And and the reports that you receive can be okay today and probably you may be, be in a serious condition tomorrow. But the report of the word of God stays stable. It does not change. So we we need to move away and put our trust in the word of God and say, yes, Lord, I'm going to put my trust in the Lord. I'm going to put my trust in the words that you have spoken. These are words that are in printed matter for us. These were, these were, these were the, these, the, we could understand that this is the breath of God. These words have gone forth out of his mouth. And they have come into us as printed matter. We kind of think, okay, this is like reading a book. But this is not just reading a book. It is the spirit of God. When we speak these words, these words are spirit and they are life. Jesus said, these words are spirit and these words are life. It can, it can cause your, your sick, dead situation to be totally and completely changed because these words are true. These words are true. So we, we take the word of God as it is and say, yes, yes, this word is for me. I believe it, I believe it, I receive, this is a promise that God has given me. We can let, we we, we can just let the promise be in the book and say, yeah, this is a good old book, I've heard about it, but unless we draw from it and say, yes, I take it into my life, these words are for me, I receive these words. These are, he has borne my uh, sicknesses and my diseases. Now, you, the, these are as medications that we take into our lives. This is like a medication. Like, now, for instance, when we receive the word of God and when we start declaring the word of God and believing the word of God and pondering over and over again concerning this word, you will never have an overdose of this medication. 
You don't have to wait for a pain to come or a disease to attack you. You can always have this in your heart, in your mouth, and all the time keep it with you and say, these are words that are already inside my heart. I'm not waiting for something to happen. I'm just taking these words. These are pills. These are words. These are, these are, this is a medication for us. We're going to see some of those. Okay, let's uh, go to Exodus chapter 23 and verse number 25. Exodus 3 and verse number 23, I'm sorry, 23 and verse number 25. And you shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless your bread. He shall bless your bread, not curse your bread. You, you people have a lot of things when they come to the table. They say, oh, we don't know what kind of food we're eating. We don't know, I mean, the kind of, uh, any kind of a poisonous effect that is in this food. But the assurance that you have when God blesses something, the curse is removed. When the blessing of God is laid upon something, the curse is removed. You can say, I thank you, Lord, that you have blessed my bread and you have blessed the water that I drink. Some, some of us, we, we so fear and uh, to even have a bottle of water or a, or a glass of water or sometimes we think, well, we don't know, I mean, this kind of food. But if you really believe God's word, yes, Lord, I trust you. I believe when you come to the table and you say, Lord, I thank you. You said that you have blessed my bread and you have blessed my water. I receive that word into my life. Sometimes we speak words, we speak curseful words over our own food. Oh, I don't know where this food comes from. I don't know who was me. I don't know what kind of dirty hands have, have they, have, they have prepared these. And, and I don't know what kind of chemicals they use on all kinds. See, when you, when you start cursing your foods, you're, 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 you're breaking the power of the blessing. And you're letting the curse be established. And then you say, oh my God, I'm having a bad stomach. I'm having a bad, bad day today because I had some bad food. Why don't we start saying, Lord, I thank you for the food that you've given me. I thank you, Lord, for the water that you've blessed and the food that you've given me is blessed. And I don't have to, and the next verse says, because the blessing is there, God says, I can remove sickness away from the midst of you. So what he does is he blesses our bread and he blesses our water and he takes away sickness. If there was a curse, he removes it. You don't even see it. With our naked eyes, we would not be able to see something that is poisonous. But we thank God. The blessing of the Lord comes upon our lives concerning our food and our water and he takes away he promises, and I will, if God said it, that settles it. That's the reason we got to pray and thank God for the food. So, Father, we pray for those who have been cursing their foods, probably not knowingly, but not, not deliberately, but then unnecessarily speaking idle words over their food, and, and they, have caught, they have caught some diseases or sicknesses in their bodies, and we pray right now that you forgive the ignorance in our lives and you would Lord bless our bread and bless our water and take sickness away from the midst of us God you can believe this word and take it into heart and say yes I don't care what, 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 where I eat what I do and what I, what I have drunk but I, have, I know my God has protected me my water is blessed my bread is blessed and the sickness is removed out of my, in, from the midst of me. Probably you're, you're in a place where you say, my, there, there are so many flies around. and there are so many. Well, we know that God is a God of the whole universe. And God's blessing is upon our lives. He removes sickness. I mean, I'm not telling you to go foolishly and eat things that, you know, unnecessarily. But... We don't know how, even when we go to eat from a restaurant, we don't know how the preparation is done and what, what kind of things they've done. 
but still we need to believe the word of God. So when I come to the table, I say, Lord, I thank you for the bread. I thank you for the food. And I thank you, Lord, that sickness is removed out of my heart. That's the way you bless yourself instead of cursing yourself. And say, I don't know what I'm, what I'm eating. I'm afraid. I might, I might catch a cold. I might go through. I mean, I might have a bad stomach. I might give up. Oh, my! I, I, I might throw off. No, you don't have to curse yourself. God removes the curse. If you agree with God's word, he will bless you and he'll remove that curse out of it. Right, so we go to another scripture from the book of the same book in Exodus. In the same book, Exodus chapter number 15 and verse number 26. Now we, are, we, we, we want to pray over our lives. We want to speak things over our lives because Health is a blessing. To live in health is luxury, I suppose. Even in times when things are not even right around, but we need to thank God and say, I thank you, Lord, for the good health that I have. I thank you, Lord, for the good health that you give me. And I'm so blessed because I have, I, you, you, you bless my water, you bless my bread, and you take away sickness away from the midst of me. I'm so blessed, Lord. I thank you, Lord. So in Exodus chapter 15 and verse number 26, they, in verse 25, we find that they came into a place where they, they wanted water. And when they wanted water, there was, there was a pond there, and the people were so thirsty for water and when they tasted the water, the water was bitter in verse 25. And then, and, and the water, and, and then the Lord said in verse number 24, we'll read from 24 probably, and, and the people murmured against Moses saying, what shall we drink? See, people have a tendency of always complaining and murmuring. I think we need to stop murmuring and complaining and use the same, at the same pace we can say, thank you, Lord, for blessing me with water and bread. And the next verse tell us, and, and he cried out to the Lord, Moses, he looked up to the Lord because he had no one to look to. And the Lord showed him a tree. When they came to this place, in verse 23, I believe, I'd say that they, when they drank the water, they could not, drink the water because the waters were bitter. And in verse 25, Moses, he prayed and the Lord showed him a tree. And that tree could be understood when we come to the New Testament. The Bible says, cursed be everyone who hangs on a tree. And Jesus became a curse for us. Maybe we'll put that scripture and come back to this again. In uh, Galatians 3.13, Christ has redeemed us or paid the price, redeemed us from the curse of the law. For breaking the law, there's a curse that comes upon a person. For breaking the law, the curse comes upon a person. But Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. He became a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on the tree. Everybody you see hanging on the tree is a cursed person. Jesus became a curse. That tree refers to the cross. Jesus became a curse for us. He, he just took upon himself the scripture that we saw before this also from the book of Isaiah where Jesus, he bore, he bore our sicknesses and our diseases and he carried our pains. He died for us not only to give us eternal life or life after this physical death, but he has given us life while we are here on earth. So cursed is everyone that hangs on the tree. Going back to the book of Exodus, chapter number 15 and verse number 25, where, where God referred, uh, God, God showed a tree to Moses and said, 
cast that tree into the waters. Cast that tree. Maybe your life has been bitter. Maybe you've been going through this bitterness because of the pain and the agony and probably, and something that you need to do is if you are holding a grudge against another, God can never bring a blessing into your life unless you say, Lord, I forgive that person. I forgive that person. You cannot hold a grudge and enjoy the goodness of God's uh, word and let that be a blessing to your life. If somebody has been mean to you, somebody has been cursing you and somebody has been always all out against you and you definitely do not want to forgive him, and the blessing, you're just closing the door for God's blessing in your life. You're just closing the door for God's blessing in your life. And I would like to remind you, if you're the kind of person you have never, you have never thought I should forgive that person instead of holding a grudge in my heart, whoever this person could have, usually we have a grudge against somebody who has been so near to us and somebody who has been so dear to us. Because you wouldn't have an outsider interfering into your life or an outsider who, whom you have too much of connections with, whom you're, whom you're communicating too much with. It has to be somebody who is nearest and somebody who is your dearest. But you need to come to the place where you say, I'm going to forgive those people. In the book of James chapter number, in the book of James chapter 5 and verse number 15 onwards, We'll read James chapter 5. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Now, how do we pray the prayer of faith? It's not, a, it's not a prayer of magic. It's a prayer of faith. Faith is in the word of God. Having faith in the word of God that will heal the sick. That word save there means heal the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed any sins... They shall be forgiven. God forgives us. Probably we have made a mistake and we have done something that has caused this thing to happen in our life. God forgives us. The prayer of faith, the prayer of faith will heal you and not only heal you, bring forgiveness into you. And the next verse says, Confess your faults one to another. That's qualifying the, the previous scripture. It says, confess your faults one to another. Well, if I have an ought against somebody, if I have something that I need to settle with a brother or a sister, I need to go to that person and say, please forgive me. That person might look at you and say, I, I can't believe that you're doing this. And, he, and that person might say, well, I, I, I don't, I mean, I don't think we have anything against each other. But it's not the person who has the bitter feeling. It's we who have been carrying something. So you've got to confess your falls one to another. I have something, a bitterness against somebody. I've got some hatred towards somebody, somebody has done something wrong to me and I felt that, you know, it's not reasonable for me to even forgive him. Probably he must, he must, uh, he, he must go through the pain that I'm going through, probably. Don't ever curse the person because that's not a, that's not a form of blessing. It's, it's causing an adverse effect to come upon your life. Confess your faults one to another. Confess your faults one to another. So go to the person. Could be somebody who is so close to you. And that person wouldn't even believe. I didn't even think that you had something against me. But that still doesn't matter to you. You got to throw it out. See, confessing is not that it's not known to God. Confessing is throwing it out of yourself. Throwing it out of yourself. Some people are not willing to forgive others. They say, okay, you just want to confess it, but I will never forgive you for what you have done for me. But you confess it, 
you get yourself released. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another. Or speak words of blessing. That word prayer means also you can speak a blessing. I bless that person. Let that person prosper. Let that person be healed. Let that person have wisdom and walk in the, in the love of God. And let that person be blessed, he and his family or she and his family be blessed. Pray for one another. And then it says that you may be healed. How come you confess your faults one to another and you pray for another and you get healed? You pray one for another. You pray for somebody else. How come you get the healing? That you may be healed. Because it's, it's, it's the same thing as sowing a seed. When you sow a seed in, in, into, the, into the soil or bless another person, you are sowing a seed and, you, and the harvest comes to you. Right? You pray for another and you get healed. That's God's way of doing things. That's God's way of moving in a person's life. It could be healing, it could be any other thing also. But you've got to confess your faults. Not that you've got to walk in condemnation in your life. Not that, oh my God, I've sinned. I don't know how to get, this, get a hold of this. But I, don't have, I haven't lost the person's phone number. I, I don't know how to contact him. But at least in words you can say, Lord, so and so had done this to me and I, I, I release a blessing into that person and I forgive that person. And I pray for that person and I bless that person wherever he is. Maybe he's not even living sometimes, but you're, you're throwing it out of your life. You're throwing it out of your life. You don't know where the person is because you, have, you, was, you were so mad about this person and you said, I don't want to have this person's number with me. I don't want to know where he lives. I have nothing to do with him. But at least you can release words. You can confess your fault and say, Lord, please forgive me. And I don't know, I can't get a hold of this person. I don't know whether the person is living or not, but I forgive that person. And, and Lord, help me understand this. And, and let, I, I pray for that person and I bless that person. And the blessing comes into my life. And I get healed. I get promoted. I prosper. You can lose out a lot of things in life when you hold on to certain things that you should have attended to a long while ago. You should have attended to it and say, no, I'm not going to hold a grudge against another. I'm not going to hold this bitterness against another. I'm going to forgive them. Right? So when you forgive them, you find yourself free. And the blessing comes into your life because you are free. You're doing the right thing You've done things according to the scriptures. You have done things exactly what the scriptures tell. And you're seeing the power of God being manifested in your life. In Ephesians, from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Now, it could be that you're finding it difficult to forgive them. It could be you're finding it hard to forget some of the things that they have done to you. But let me show you how you can do it scripturally. Verse number 31. Let all bitterness, bitterness, that's being bitter towards somebody. I'm so bitter towards this situation and towards this person for whatever he has done to me. You know, whenever you hold on to bitterness, you're only you're only, you're, only t- you're only letting God's blessings be taken away from you. Your faith is going to be inactive when you're walking in bitterness. Let all bitterness, any kind of a bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking, That word clamor also means that you you have this habit of all the time murmuring and complaining and and crying out in grief all the time. Evil speaking. Anything that is not scripturally right. Evil speaking. Be put away from you with all malice. Any kind of a thought 
that you have in your mind to harm somebody or probably let something come upon that person for what he or she has done to me. All put aside. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor and uh, uh, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Put away. It's, it's like, you know, putting that shirt off from you and say, I don't have nothing to do with this. This is a dirty garment that I'm wearing. I'm just putting it off. I want to wear a clean garment of love, of forgiveness, of humility, of saying, Lord, I'm free. I don't want to. I don't want to walk in hatred towards anybody. People have done bad to me, but I'm not going to do bad to them. I'm just going to forgive them. It may be hard trying to do it with your own strength, but I'm going to show you the secret from, from the next verse. Verse number 32. Be kind one to another. Be kind one to another. Sometimes we are so kind to the people whom we meet in the outside, but then we are a little unkind to the people who are inside the home. We can be so harsh, but when we speak to people, you know, we, we, we want to act good in the presence of others. But when it comes to the home front, well, I, you see, they understand, they need to understand. Well, what do we understand? The Bible gives us a command to be kind one to another. If you are not kind to the ones who are at home, your kindness is not genuine with the others outside. I can try to put on a show that I'm a good person. I'm all right. I mean, people can walk into the church. It's perfectly all right. I mean, we, are, I mean, we, we, can, we can do all our, our unkind talking outside the church and then walk into the church and see and, and with a smiley face. But God sees your heart. And God knows that you are losing on it. Right? So in the presence of others, we can try to be nice. But to one another, we are not too nice. We feel that's not very important. I don't have to feel, be too kind to somebody who is at home. I mean, they need to understand. We, under, we have an understanding with each other. What is the understanding we have with each other? To be unkind to one another? To not be tender hearted, to be not to have that consciousness of that's your spouse, that's my child, that's somebody who is who is with me. No, they need to understand. They need to the only mature way you can if you think that you're a mature person, the only thing that you can understand is to walk in kindness one to another. God is love. And kindness is a fruit of love. And, and God is the most mature person. I can try to have all my charisma in the outside, all my looks and everything, but if I don't have love, it doesn't profit me nothing, the Bible says. I can have everything, but if I don't have love, be kind one to another. Tender-hearted, because you're, you don't want to lose out on the blessings of God. These are things that can keep you away from the blessing, the very blessing that is about to come to you, and, and you're, ha you're, coming, you're having this blessing to come to you, but because you're not tender-hearted, you're not kind one to another, you just let that blessing go out of me, it doesn't matter, but I don't want to change my attitude. My, I'm not going to change my way. My lifestyle is going to be just as I am. Don't try to change me. It's not that we, don't want, to, we, we want to force somebody to change into our designing or our mold, but we need to get every one of us, we have to shape and alter and come into the mold of God's commandments. God's commandments are good. They're not hard. They're not grievous. They're not difficult for us to keep. This is a command. Be kind one to another. Tender hearted. Tender hearted. But you do it with your heart and you, you don't do it just to be Okay, okay, I'm okay with you. But that's not kindness. 
You've got to be tender. I mean, we are flesh and bones. We are not inhuman. In fact, after we got saved, we are, we are changed. We have the love of God in us. Our lifestyle has changed. Our way of doing things have changed. We might say, oh, everybody, I mean, I know everybody understands my temper. No, nobody understands your temper. But they just want to be away from you. They don't want to be close to you because you can flare up at any time. You're like a short fuse. And, and you are the kind of person that God loves you to the extent that he wants you not to be so. He wants you to be kind one to another, tender-hearted, soft-spoken, lovingly. You can do greater things when you're really doing it in the right spirit. Well, this is, this is how my, this is how I have learned things and this is how I, th- I get my job done anyhow. No, that's not the way. You can get the job done by being kind-hearted too. I'm not the kind of person. That's not my nature. Yes, that was not our nature. Every one of us, we had a bad nature. We, we had a hardened heart. But when God came into our lives, he took our hardened heart, the heart that was like a stone, like a rock. He took it out and he gave us a tender heart. He gave us a a heart of flesh. He says, now you can. But some of the residue of the past, they try to trouble us. But we got to be tender hearted. Forgiving one another. Forgiving one another. Make sure that you you forgive them. God wants you to forgive them. And the secret is this. Forgiving one another even as God. You know, God also couldn't forgive us. Do you know that? He could not. Even as God for Christ's sake had forgiven you. So the center of the whole thing is Christ. He was the mediator between God and man. God was wrath. He didn't, he's a holy God and we humans were unholy. But the only way he could forgive us was through Christ Jesus. The only way he could forgive us is through Christ Jesus. So if he has forgiven us through Christ Jesus, he says, even as God for Christ's sake forgave you, God who is holy, who is perfect in all, he couldn't genuinely forgive. But the only way he could have forgiven is through Christ, through a mediator. And you and I need to remember, anytime we feel bitter about anyone who is nearest and dearest to us, God forgave me because of Jesus Christ. And I forgive those because of Jesus Christ, who is the mediator. That's a secret. You couldn't do it by yourself, but you only do it through Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for you were able to stand before me and God, and you were the mediator, and God's heart was moved. When Jesus hung on the cross, dying for no reason, for anything that he had done, he didn't die. But he, he, while he was dying, he said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. Forgive them. And the heart of the Father was so moved in forgiving the human race all together. The entire human race is forgiven. The only thing is they got to receive that forgiveness by receiving Jesus into their heart. By asking Jesus to come into their heart. Lord, I believe Jesus, you are Lord. You are the mediator between me and God. I couldn't see God eye to eye. I can't go to God's presence. But I thank God 
that Jesus was the Lamb of God that was prepared from the very foundation to die for me and to take away the wrath of God. God's wrath. God was angry. God, he didn't, he, he, he was angry. And, and the only reason that he could not destroy the whole universe was because he had already prepared a lamb even before the foundation of the world. And he knew that Jesus would come and through his sacrifice that the entire human race will be totally and completely forgiven. And their sins would no more be remembered and their iniquities will no more be remembered for Christ's sake. Likewise, you and I, we can forgive one another. We can forgive one another so that we might be healed. We might be able to to do things differently. We go to the next verse, chapter 5 and verse number 1. Be therefore followers of God as dear children. So follower, be a follower of God. How do I be a follower of God? For God, for Christ's sake, forgive. Forgive me. And I'm going to be follow, I'm going to follow God by doing the same thing. I'm going to forgive those people who have wronged. I'm going to have a tender heart. I'm just moved. Not because they are doing the right thing to me. Not because they have, they have changed their attitudes towards me. But I choose to forgive them because I don't want to lose my blessing. I don't want to lose my blessing. My blessing is just there for me. But I'm losing on the blessing because... I don't want to forgive those people. It, it, it changed. It's a world of a difference for a child of God to live in bitterness and block, which is a blessing blocker really, and unforgiveness in the heart of a, of a child of God, which is a blessing blocker, and, and expect God in spite of all this, Lord, you still bless me. God says, I, I want to bless you. I, I love you so much that I want. God is, the most ex, God is more excited that you be blessed and walk in the blessing and walk in health, walk in the luxury of health. Even in the midst of the pandemic, you can still walk in health because God is your shield and your protection. He's all for you. He's not against you. But he said, do one thing. As I forgave you because of Jesus Christ, you forgive others because of Jesus Christ. Be followers of God as dear children, as loving children. The next verse says, and walk in love. Walk in love. Love. It's, it's a lifestyle. To walk in love is a lifestyle. It's a walk of love that you have begun the day that you accepted Jesus Lord of your life. Your walk, it's a lifestyle. You're not trying to put on something. Now you're made it a walk in your life. That's my lifestyle. Walk in life, love as Christ also has loved us. Now we see the flow of God's love flowing through us and we are walking in love. And that's the fuel that we have to walk in love. We're just walking in love. We're just walking in love. We, I mean, forgiveness is no difficult thing for us now. We just walk in love because we have a tender heart. We are, we are compassionate towards one another. We just want to forgive people for what they have done and we know that they will do it again but still we just keep them, keep forgiving others because we want, we have been loved of Christ as Christ had loved us and even and had given himself as an offering and a sacrifice to God as a sweet smelling savor God I mean it was like God who said man that's a perfect sacrifice that has really made me smell so good that now I'm loving the people only because of the sacrifice of Christ. Christ 
sacrificed his body, his life, his soul, his spirit. And God, he smells it. He says, I just, I, I smell it so good because I can love people now. God is not, God cannot be mad with you. I can just love them. And that's a sacrifice that you and I ought to understand that it's a sweet, if it, if it, is, sweet, if it is a sweet smelling savor to God, it should always be a sweet smelling savor to us too. And we can say, yes, I can walk in forgiveness. I can walk in love. I can be tender hearted one to another. I can be kind hearted one to another. I don't want to put on this kind of a life to be nice with the outsiders and to be mean to the insiders. I feel I want to just, I'm a changed character. You cannot change this in my life. I can never be a mean person. No longer. I was, but I'm no longer. I'm a child of God. I have I've a changed attitude because I, I want to walk in the luxury of God's protection. Wherever I go, I'm walking in love. Because I'm walking in love, there is a protection of love. There is a protection that God gives me. I don't care what's around me. A thousand shall fall at my side and a ten thousand on my right hand because of my walk of love. I have my protection. That's a good psalm that we need to put up. Let's go to Psalm 91 and verse number 7 because when I'm walking in love, I have that protection. I can't just claim that scripture by saying, yeah, Lord, that's my scripture for today and I'm going to claim it having a grudge against another. You can't do that. You can't do that. Go, go to the verse before that. No, okay, before that. Thou shalt not be afraid of terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, whether it be a terror by night or by, or by day. See, it's a, it's, a, it's a complete covering that you have from God. You will not be afraid. You are not going to be afraid. Why are people afraid? Because they're not walking in love. Love, perfect love, Casteth out fear. You can walk in perfect love because you're walking, because you understand that you're tender hearted, you're forgiving, you're, you're no longer bitter towards one another. You shall not be afraid for the terror by night. Are you having nightmares? Are you afraid of the night? Probably you're thinking of something that may happen to you. Nor for the arrow that flies by day. You shall not be afraid of any kind of a thing that is hurled against you. You're protected. And the next verse. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Nor for the pestilence that walk in darkness. Nor for the destruction at noonday. See, you're protected. At night time, at dark times, at noondays, your protection is there. You're not afraid of these things. And the next verse tell us, verse number seven, a thousand shall fall at thy side. A thousand shall fall at thy side. Okay, you have a thousand people. Oh my God, for some reason, they're all gone. And a 10,000 in your right hand, they're gone. But you might be even surprised in the midst of 11,000 people. That pestilence, those diseases, those terrorizing things are not even touching you. What a luxurious walk you're having with the Lord. It shall not come nigh. It shall not come near you. It shall not come near you. It will not come near you. These are, the, these are scriptures that we need to take for our protection. And we got to say, yes, I understand. Psalm 91 is just not a, a magical promise, but it works when I walk in love. It works when I walk in love. And verse number 8 says, only with your eyes you will see the reward or the punishment of the wicked. With your eyes you will see. You don't have to curse them. You will just see with your eyes 
the reward, that word reward, we always think a reward is something that you get for a beneficial, but then that word reward means also how they can be punished. Only with your eyes you will behold and see the, the punishment of the wicked. They've been vicious towards you, they've been wicked towards you, but you, you just say, Lord, I'm walking in the blessing of God. I bless those who curse me. I pray for those who despitefully use me. And I'm, I, I, I just walk the walk of love. Because I want to live in the luxury of healing and health. I want to live in health. I don't want to be diseased. I don't want to be sick in my body. I don't want to be troubled and walking in fear and pestilence and all kinds of things in the midst of 11,000 people. Let's go back to the verse again, verse number seven. A thousand shall fall at thy side, 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come near you. Whatever it may be that has destroyed the 11,000 people around you, that will not come near you. You will find that you're well shielded and protected because you're walking in love. You have forgiven those who have wronged you, wronged uh, uh, you and those who, have, those who have tried to meddle with your lives and those who have tried to provoke you, you, have still, you still want to love them. Verse number eight, we saw verse number nine. Because you have made the Lord who is your refuge, even the most high, your habitation. Okay, there are, some, there are more promises, but we're going to go to verse 14. We just go to verse 14. Because he has set his love upon me, because he has set his love upon me, that is because you're walking in love with one another and you're walking in love towards God. Therefore will I deliver him and I will set him on high. Therefore will I deliver him and set him on high. Always remember, God, because you have, you have, you are walking in love. Now, love simply means that I obey his commandments. What is love? In 1 John, we'll put that scripture up. In 1 John chapter number 5 and verse number 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. This is the love of God that we keep his commandments. Right? So what is the love of God? How do I love him? By keeping his commandments. Being tender-hearted, kind-hearted, and also uh, kind one to another, forgiving one another, putting away evil speaking, loving one another, and this is the love of God. So because we love him in Psalm 91, it says, because he has set his love upon me or keeping my commandments, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high. Have you been low these days? No, they're not going to believe that because God says because you have loved him by keeping his commandments, I'm going to keep you on high places. People go around and say, oh, I'm just low, I'm just low. No, don't believe that. And don't even speak that because God's promise is that he's going to keep you high. He's going to keep you in high places. Oh, these are days that I'm so low. I mean, things are bad. Things are going from bad to worse. You don't have to speak that language. You can say, I, I go to the book of Psalm 91 and verse 14 and it tells me, because I have loved God by keeping his commandments, therefore he has delivered me. He has delivered me and set me on high. Because he has known my name. Do you know the name of Jesus? Do you know the name? If you know the name of Jesus, if you know the name of Jesus and how strong and how powerful it is, it will always be set on high because you have known his name. Call upon him in the day of trouble and he will answer you. His name is above every other name and every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. And because you have known his name, 
See, name talks about the character. It also is just not a name only, but it's about a character. You know Jesus. You know him. You know that he's a loving God. You know that he's a savior. He's your healer. He's your provider. You know that his character is good. He's always good to me. You've known him. You've known his name. And when anything comes against you, you use the name of Jesus. The Bible says, use my name. In my name you shall cast out demons. Have you been tormented lately? Trouble to sleep in the nights? Probably you're finding it hard. You're worried about things. Use the name of Jesus and take authority over the surroundings and say, in the name of Jesus, I address you. Go. That's the authority that you have in the name of Jesus. In my name you shall cast out demons. In my name you shall tread upon serpents and scorpions. In my name you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. In my name. If any man pray in my name. John it says you, don't, you, 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 you go to the father in my name. John 16 and verse 23 says. When you pray. You pray to the father. That's a beautiful scripture. We should read that. Let's go to that scripture. In that day you shall ask me nothing. Now Jesus has become like a curse name sometimes to people. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Sometimes they just wear the cross around and just try to impress people. That's like, you know, well that's one of the, but that's not it. We have the spirit in that name. There's a spirit behind that name. We don't use the name of Jesus in vain. When something bad happens, oh Jesus. Well, that's, not, that's not the way we use the name of Jesus. In that day you shall ask me nothing. This is the principle we need to understand. Just don't say Jesus. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you ask the Father, Whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, in the name of Jesus, he will give it to you. Whatever you ask in my name. So you come to him and say, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Today is a day that I'm going through a certain situation, Lord, whatever. You can name the situation and talk to him because he's your loving father. And when you pray in the name of Jesus, you can say, thank you, Lord. I receive my prayer. I receive my answer in the name of Jesus. And you close the chapter. Thank you, Lord. I believe that you have a way to bring this that I need. I thank you, Lord. You need to use the name of Jesus, which is important. He said, don't just say Jesus, Jesus, and, and use that as a curse word or, or some kind of a slang. You got to go to the Father in Jesus' name. That's how you work things out. That's the covenant pattern. The Father, He's He's a, He's your Father and He's your He's your provider and He's your heir all in all. So what do you do? Whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, He will give it to you. That's the order of the covenant that we are in. We don't just say, oh Jesus. That's not how it is. Oh Father, we thank you. That you're such a loving Father. I come to you in the name of Jesus concerning my need. And Lord, I believe that you still ask and it shall be given unto me. And I ask and right now I receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. When you say amen, you close the book. The word amen simply means so be it. Or let it be exactly the way I said. And he will give it to you. He will give it to you. He will give it to you when you have asked in his name. And you may not see, it may not be a a magical form or maybe you might not have an earthquake or you might not have something going over your ceiling or something, you may not feel anything. You may not feel anything about it. But you have prayed the right way. You have prayed to your heavenly father 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And you believe that you receive the prayer. In Mark chapter 11, in Mark chapter 11, and verse number 24, Mark chapter 11 and verse number 24, Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, the way that we saw in John 16 verse 23. When you pray, believe that you, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Now you've got to believe, when you pray, you've got to believe that you have received them you got to believe that you have received them. I believe that I have received them. I believe that believing is very important because in whom you have faith, you believe that person. In whom you love, you believe him. You believe and you trust him. You don't even see him, but you believe him. So your relationship is very important in your prayer. When you say, yes, Lord, I believe that it is given unto me. I believe that I received it, and then you shall have them. Now, it doesn't tell us any particular time. There are times that you may receive it immediately. There are times that you have, it may, it may take a while, but it doesn't matter. The most important thing is, you've already closed the chapter by saying, Lord, and every time you remember it, you say, thank you, Father, you've answered my prayer. I thank you, Father, I have confidence that you've answered my prayer. I thank you, Lord. And maybe a week later, oh, this thing becomes a botheration to you. Oh, my God, I prayed. I don't, I don't, I don't have to keep praying the thing over and over again, but I, I believe, yes, Lord, I thank you, I received it. I thank you, Lord, I received it. A week later, 10 days later, you can still say, Lord, I thank you. I have prayed, the chapter is closed, it is sealed and finished, Lord, in your name. It is sealed and completed in your name, so I don't have to keep worrying about it or keep asking and asking and asking. I believe that it is done, it is a done deal. So today I just thank you, Lord, that you've answered my prayer. You will see more results by thanking the Lord then for you to keep begging, oh God, what have you done, Lord? Why haven't I received? Lord, why aren't you answering? That's not the way. You, by thanking, you'll receive, you'll receive more results by thanking the Lord. Yes, Lord, I thank you. You answered my prayer. I believe that you answered my prayer. I'm not worried about it no more, Lord. I'm not going to take this as a worry or a care. I'm not going to carry this around. I believe that it is done. In 1 John, quickly, we're going to wind up quickly. In 1 John chapter 5, we're, we're seeing how important it is for us to use scriptures and make prayers. Or use scriptures which is according to God's pattern of asking and receiving it. Will that you prosper, that you be in good health, even as you grow in the spirit or making your mind spiritual. That's the will of God. Or you might say, oh, that was just a, a journey blessings over, over John that John made. No, no, it is, it is the will of God. We take those things at the will of God. According to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus, he meets us. So this is the confidence, the assurance I have. I have the assurance, yes, that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will. Now when you, you will never make a mistake in asking anything against his will, I'm sure. If you're a child of God, you're not going to ask for anything against his will. You're going to ask according to his will. Now when you pray, you say, Lord, I have read the Bible, I have had the peace concerning this situation, and I'm asking you, and when I ask you, I ask in confidence. I have assurance that it is your will, and you hear us. 
If God heard it, you better believe that you got the answer. He hears us. If God heard it, you got the answer. If God heard it, you got the answer. Now going back again to the book of Mark 11. We'll go back to it. Mark 11, chapter 11 and verse number 24 we read. Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Believe that you receive them that you shall have them. Whatever time you have prayed, that is the time that you have received the answer. That is the time that you have received the answer. You've got to thank God for it. And then it says in Mark 11 and verse number 25, And when you pray standing or sitting or kneeling down or whatever way you are doing, it, it simply means when you pray standing, forgive. That's the criteria. That's the most important factor. Forgive. Your prayer is not going to be answered when there's a blessing blocker. Forgive. If you have ought against any, that your Father also in heaven, that your Father also who is in heaven may forgive your trespasses. See, if I regard iniquity in my heart, God does not hear me, the Bible says. If I regard iniquity in my heart, God does not hear me. But the only way I can get my iniquity out of me or the trespass or that which is a sin out of me, the only way I do it by forgiving those who have ought against me. Have you seen why your prayers have not even reached the ceiling yet? Because there's a blessing blocker that we have entertained in our lives. And we have said, we're not going to forgive them. After all they have done to me. You mean to say, God can forgive, but God is God. But who are you? You're a son of God. You're a child of God. You have the DNAs of God. You have the spirit of Christ in you. You have the Holy Spirit of God. You are, you are made in the likeness and in the image of God. So if you regard iniquity in your heart, I believe it's in, in Psalm. If you regard iniquity in your heart, it says God cannot hear you. Try to find the scripture. Maybe that quickly and then we'll, find, we'll close it. Verse number 25, again in Mark eleven twenty-five. 25, I say, when you stand praying, forgive. Forgive if you have ought against any. Now if, which simply means you don't have to all the time when you go to God, oh God, I come to you in Jesus' name with my prayer, and Lord, if I have, no, you don't have to. You got to know whether you have some bitterness against somebody. You don't have to all the time be in condemnation. Oh God, if I have uh, wronged somebody, no, all the time. You just know, you just know in your heart there's something that you're carrying which is a baggage, which has not only been a baggage to you, it's a blessing blocker in your life. It's a blessing blocker in your life. And that can affect your life. And you're just, the blessing is just coming in and that unforgiveness is blocking the blessing. God says, I cannot forgive you. How do you go? Where does find the scripture? Put the scripture. Psalm 66. Psalm 66 and verse 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. God cannot hear you. Which means there's, a, there's something that I need to attend to in my life. And we saw, we saw very clearly how we forgive others. I mean, God himself couldn't forgive us but because of the mediator Christ Jesus, for Christ's sake, God forgave us. And God says, for Christ's sake, you forgive others. For Christ's sake, you forgive others. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. My prayer is not going to be heard. God says there's something that is blocking an unforgiveness. 
So this is not a, this is not a, a guilt trip that you're going to live all your lifetime. It simply needs to be done once and for all. So God, so and so has wronged me. I forgive them. I forgive her. I forgive him. And I'm going to be tender hearted towards that person. I'm not, no longer going to be bitter towards that person. I've forgiven them. Right? And we're going to close with 25 again. Going back again to the book of Mark 11, 25. For when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any, that your Father also who is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. Verse 26. And when you, yeah, verse 26. And if you do not forgive, if you do not forgive, neither will your Father who is in heaven forgive your trespasses. Neither will your Father in heaven forgive you. Now, this is the kind of prayer that we got to get involved with. According to the principles of God's word, we pray and we receive answers. We pray and we receive answers. Our prayers don't just go to the air and maybe somewhere down the line when I get to heaven I'll receive my prayer. Now God, pray, God, God wanted us to receive answers while we're here on earth. Receive the answer. So whatever you're praying for, you better believe, use the principle of God's word. Pray in the name of Jesus to the Father. Not just keep saying, Jesus, oh Jesus, why did this happen? Oh Jesus, why? No, that's not a prayer. You, the, the proper way of praying is understanding your Father, the love of your Father. Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name and I believe that you will hear my prayer. And Lord, I, have, I, I forgive so and so. And probably if you have some way of contacting the people, call them and say, please forgive me. I've had something against you. And, and uh, from this day forth, I have nothing against you. I love you. And uh, we're not going to, I'm not going to hold on to this grudge anymore. Uh, you have nothing to pay me. I, I'm free. I don't expect anything from you. I'm going to believe God to bless me. If somebody has cheated you, probably, you've got to come to the grips of understanding and that person not willing to pay you. Or he keeps on saying, well, I'll pay you someday. Okay, when you get the money someday, you can pay me. But I don't want to be, I don't want my blessings to stop from God. So that someday may come to this person or else God will recompense. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your words of life today. The thought of the principles of understanding how we could love you and see the blessings coming into our lives through prayer, through understanding God's word, living in, in holiness, walking in love, forgiving those who have wronged us, and walking this walk of blessings. And Father, we thank you that you have, it's, it, you have programmed it, you have, your principles are laid out for us to be blessed. So we want to walk in the blessing of God. And we have the confidence that whatever we ask from you, that we would receive. Thank you, Father. We have the confidence that you hear us when we pray. We're not just praying for anything, just to go up in the air, but we have prayed to the Father in Jesus' name. Amen.